absolutely irrelevant. It does not bear that question completely, and that would be a straightforward answer to that issue. Mr. Kamoto also said that this court can sit on any day, at any time, continuously. Section 10, subsection 7 of the High Court Organization and Administration Act 2015 does not support his argument. That section provides, and I quote, the Chief Justice may, where necessary for the expedient and proper exercise of judicial authority, authorize the seating of the court on any day or at any time. The seating of this court on any day at any time requires express authority of the Chief Justice under Section 10, Subsection 7 of the High Court Organization and Administration Act. My learned colleague, Mr. Nyamori, made an important point, and I think I support that point. The Constitution says what it says, but it means what the courts say. Very crucial point. The Constitution at Article 165, Clause 4, says who can consume this bench. That is the Chief Justice. Can the DCJ also do it? Is that an administrative or a constitutional mandate? The jurisprudence by this court, as we have alluded to, is three cases. The Omtata case, the Kemri case, and the Leila, Le, Leila Conchella case. The Omtata case and the Kemri case present that as a constitutional mandate of the Chief Justice. The Leila Conchella case, at the high court level, presents it as an administrative function, but we now know that the Court of Appeal has found that to be an arguable point on appeal and has given a stay order on the strength of that arguability. The weight of that jurisprudence militates against finding that this is an administrative decision, as has been urged by my colleagues from the other side. Since I have only five minutes, an issue arose here, uh, my lord, my lady. We tried to object, but we were told we will have a right of reply. Professor Agenda presented a piece of paper from his hand, claiming it's a memo from the Chief Justice. We sought clarification on where that paper has come from. First, his argument was it's in the portal. We sought to know in which case file in the portal that paper has come from and why it has no time stamp that is symptomatic of all documents that are lodged in the portal, and there was no clarity on that. He then said, Mr. Nyamodi will comment on it. Mr. Nyamodi stood, began, and concluded his submissions <laughs> without commenting on it. <laughs> he also told us it is in the file. Papers like this will find themselves in the file through affidavits. This is evidentiary material. Again, we were not told which affidavit or which deponent filed on which day. We we'll therefore urge you that as you pursue this matter, you take into account that we have not had a fair opportunity to treat this piece of evidence in its proper context because of the, with respect, woolly nature of the manner in which it has been presented before this court. I urge my lords that in view of the matters raised before you, this matter ought to finally clear the position of this, this court on the jurisprudence of Article 165, Clause 4 of the Constitution you give it considered thought, and that you return this file back to the appropriate authority, the Chief Justice, to do that which is just and right, as per Article 165, Clause 4. In matters as fundamental as this, in a matter where we all agree that this is a defining moment for our country, we cannot afford to be casual about it. We cannot afford to be expedient about it. It's in matters that is where a question of principle arises, and of all the three organs of government, only one organ stands out for standing on principle, the judicial arm of government. All other arms of government stand on politics and policy, but principle is reserved for the judicial arm of government. We urge you to admit that principle and find that the applicants and their supporters before you have made out a case for you to down your tools in this matter on the strength of the manner in which you are constituted. I rest my case. A very eminent.
Donc, dans ce mouvement, on va pas filmer. Attendez, bien. And she instructs me to inform the court that she is here because Article 156 sub Article 6 enjoins the Attorney General to promote, protect, and uphold the rule of law and to defend the public interest. The people of Kenya have a public interest in the maintenance of a stable government and in the protection of the sovereignty of their republic. And that republic is underpinned by having continuity in the institutions of government, be they the legislature, be it the judiciary, or be it the executive. We shall be submitting that the public interest is in favor of an expeditious disposal of matters that affect the continuity of government and that imperial the stability of the state. And that human rights are not only accorded to individual applicants, they are also accorded to the collectivity called Kenya and the people of Kenya they also have human rights. I agree with my learned friend, Mr. Ongoya, who is a very eminent uh, constitutional jurist and a practitioner of the constitutional law. I agree with him when he says the Constitution 2010, in many ways, is transformative, has introduced more versatility in the protection of human rights. That is true. I also agree with him when he says that the Constitution must be construed in a manner to give full effect and protection to the rule of law and to human rights. But I further submit this, that the Constitution too must be interpreted so as not to create an absurdity. The Constitution must be construed so as not to create an absurdity or to put it in conflict with itself. What is the purpose of the Constitution to establish the state? What is, its father, uh, what is its father purpose to provide for democratic government and to protect the rule of law and to protect human rights? These are not, these are not in contradistinction. These are not at war with each other. A stable government a sovereign people and human rights are not in conflict with each other. They are in harmony. It is the work of the court to interpret in order to create that harmony. When the court is, is invited to interpret the Constitution so as to create an absurdity, it must refuse to do so. This afternoon, you are being invited to interpret the Constitution to create an absurdity. Why is it an absurdity? The Deputy Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya can swear in the President of the Republic of Kenya into office. What a huge power. What a huge authority. The, Chief Justice, the Deputy Chief Justice
Justice of the Republic of Kenya can empanel a panel of judges can, oh, sorry, can, uh, can appoint a tribunal to remove the president from office. What a huge responsibility. What huge authority. But wait a minute. The deputy chief justice cannot assign duties to judges. my lords. What then does the deputy, Chief Justice, deputize? What does she deputize? <coughs> In many jurisdictions, like those referred to by the distinguished counsel on the other side, in many jurisdictions, including the United States, there is no office of deputy Chief Justice. In the Supreme Court of the United States, there is the Chief Justice and Associate Justices. In Kenya, the drafters of our Constitution, and if I may say so myself with a bit of humility, I was one of the drafters. Knowing that in other countries there was no office of Deputy Chief Justice, decided in Kenya there shall be an office to deputize the Chief Justice. In doing what? I'll be very brief. That is to be found in the Constitution itself and in the, in the statute. And uh, uh, I think uh, I will read my, I will leave my learned friends, Mr. Bobo, Bobo, to deal with that. But let me, in the two minutes I've been granted by this gracious lady, Make one point, two points. <laughs> Beneficiaries of expert orders stand before this court and say only they are entitled to expert orders. They are here to, to complain that they went before Judge Gong, they went before Judge Mwita, they got expert orders with finality, and that was okay. But when the Attorney General went ex parte and all her prayers were refused, except the prayer to send the matter to the Chief Justice, she was wrong. How is that possible? My Lord, I want you to remember, because it is in your file, the transmission from Kiriboya is in the bottom. Unless my learned friends are saying they have never seen the photo itself. Yeah? The registrar in Kirinyaga, Honorable Wanyama, writes a letter. Yes? Saying, Good evening. Kindly find and touch the document for your attention. It has a title to the Chief Justice. It is on the 18th. Uh, and it is. For, it is 15.45. It is 3.45 in the afternoon. So when counsel repeats again and again, things were done at night. Well, a lie, a lie can, can go halfway around the world before truth wears its pants. It is not true. It is not true. The registrar sends the order at 3.45 in the afternoon. I stop there so that my learned friend will continue. Uh, thank you.